The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everyone. Basil Shapkin here sitting in for Tommy O'Brien. We're looking at the Dow on this uh, Tuesday, the 12th of uh, November. Yes, this morning, kick, morning market kickoff. And uh, as Tommy usually does a fabulous show, assessing and putting the fundamentals together with the technicals. I can just do the technicals. I'm telling you the Dow right now. The futures are up 61. They were down 63 be earlier. Now they're up 61 at 44,502. For me, the big question has been, is this a takeoff um, pattern from the Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone? You see this green and little mini channel, green and pink. Uh, it's like a, a slightly downsloping cushion or a spring or a trampoline. And everything about this, especially with the stochastic flat at 94%, tells me that, yes, I've, I'm considering this an A with a chance that maybe today on the down the cash, we actually make a peak A. And then what I'm anticipating is that about a third of the way down, so if you had to take, let's just, it's at 44,505 right now, the Dow Futures, the YM. If you had to go down to, say, 43,800, um, that distance to the top tells me that we could, in fact, get a peak A. And oh, I should show this because uh, some of you don't know my technique. So let me see if I can find that right now. Do it quickly. So I like to identify the lowest bar. Here's the lowest bar. And then count each successively higher peak. The idea is to go to get an upgrade from a buy signal to a buy mode, which implies that there should be at least four higher peaks. I alphabetize them sequentially. Peak A is the first peak. As long as you don't take out the starting point low, then you just go up uh, alphabetically in order sequentially with uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. Whoops. And you can see that it goes to peak A. Uh, if it gets upgraded to peak um, on the way to peak B or leg B, that means you've got at least in the Chamway methodology a, a really good chance. And I say a really good chance, I mean a really good chance of going to four higher peaks at least, peak D. And then other things can happen and go E, F, and G, or you can recycle a whole bunch of things. But D is your objective. So that would say to me that there's a really good chance, unless in the next What's today, Tuesday? I'd say within a week. If we pull back and we see a close under 43,500, I'm just going to have a 1,000 points lower. I'm just going to have to say, hey, there's a chance we could be having a failure pattern. But so far, this looks like the perfect takeoff. And the reason is, see this huge Morboza candle? That's a candle, a huge long candle, uh, either green or red. And it has no wicks. I don't treat it that way. I can, I, if there's a tiny little wick, that's fine with me. The characteristic is of a Mirabosa candle. Then there are three outcomes that I'm always looking for after that. One is a little tiny doji candle and a pullback, the, that, the, sec, the second bar after that big uh, Mirabosa candle. Or it just gaps up and it continues higher. That's really a powerful takeoff formation. Or it just immediately from the Moroboza candle has a really serious pullback of more than a third of the whole candle. We didn't get that. What we got was an unchanged, unbelievable that at 40, uh, what was it, 44,200 or something, you could get an unchanged uh, minus 0.59, I think it was. <laughs> 0 0.59. That's amazing. I used to do these notations way back when I hand charted an idea, went back to 1920s. Uh, I had a book that had all the closing prices of the Dow, and I, I put them in and on, I hand charted on engineering paper. And whenever I got a 0% change, less than one point, in those days, one point was a big deal. I mean, I would make a little yellow marker and, and I'd look at the characteristic. I have a story about that. Maybe I'll tell it one day when there were the 19. 
1987, when you had that sharp seller from August. I'll tell it now. And you had that sharp pullback. And then there was a rally that went to a zero. That was exactly unchanged. 24 66 or something like that anyway in the Dow. And what happened is I said, if the next day, I said, I, I had a hotline, Fidelity was one of my clients at the time. Um, I had a hotline. I said, if the Dow is more than 60 points, 60 was a lot of points, 60 points lower uh, by noon today, watch out, this could be a very serious pullback. And of course, that went, led to the October the 19th uh, crash. Well, what I'm looking at here is that there was a little doji candle, very tiny candle, but we had a very strong move to the upside. Uh, Thursday, Friday saw the fall. Oh, was that Friday? Oh, uh, and yesterday saw the follow through. So now what we're looking at is this to me is a an extension of the a move that came from uh, just under 42,000. I'm calling it a brand new leg A. And what I am saying is I believe that there's a good chance that over a period of uh, a week or so, we should be making higher highs. But maybe at this point, the higher highs are telling us, and now I get into that one third uh, where it can go from the low of, say, 40, I'm, I'm just uh, visualizing it, 43,800, um, we can go to about the 40, just under 45,000, maybe just over 45,000 in this move. And then we go, then we start to see some very choppy resistance. I mean, that's, the, that's the outlook. All right, enough with that. Let's go to the E-mini. The E-mini right now is down 4.75. We're down 5 at 5,025. Here as well, could this be a leg E? Certainly it could because you started off. You haven't taken out the left side. <laughs> Let me just check that. I thought I had checked it. Uh, that's that low there at 57.25.25. This low is 57.24. Oh, we did. So this is a brand new A. All right. So if that's the case, that's the E mini. Let's look at the NQ. The NQ is, I, I'm, I'm doing it off the futures. I did something a little different on the uh, on the indexes themselves. Down 17, down 18, and 21,202. Still looking really good. And look at the slow stochastic flat at 94%. Over 80 is good. Over 87 is really good. In the 90s is great. And in the 94 to 95% area is fantastic as long as it remains flat. The on balance volume, this blue line, the daily chart is a little bit overbought. And the expansion of the MACD is really positive. And the uh, relative strength is good. It's not great. So that's just saying um, that the e mini NASDAQ uh, continuous contract is doing very well. But uh, we've got to see the follow through. And look, we've got a leg C in the weekly chart, and it should go to a D. So that's still very positive. Let's go to the IWM. That's the Russell 2000 RTY. Uh, gone to a leg C. Now, that's a little bit different to the others. It's pulling back 12 points at 2436.50. Um, still very strong action. Stochastics at 93%. On balance volume is good. Uh, a little bit overbought, and the MACD is still expanding, and that's really positive. So with that said, we'll go to gold, GC, uh, down, it's up to 2.5 at 26.20. Uh, um, what a move. It's gone from the 2,800 area to the 2,600. Today's low is 25.96. This is where it should try to establish some kind of support, at least momentarily. But I think the trend for gold on the short term is still looking at some weakness. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman sitting in for Tommy O'Brien. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Oh, Tommy O'Brien. So I just wanted to show you some of the text. You remember soon about that PD. So here's the one-minute E-mini chart, and it ran from 840 from about the 6,026 level up to a peak D, remember we're looking at that D, and the D was right there at 901, at 6031.50. And then what I just did during the break, uh, the people could see me doing it live, I drew in a left side, right side price time match, which said if I use the plumb line from that peak D to the right side, the number of bars on the left side should equal the number of bars on the right side. And at um, 920, and that's right now, we should be testing the low that was made at 842 of uh, 6,026.25. Well, it came in one bar earlier. We went to 6,025.50. So these are techniques, and I'll be doing a webinar on Thursday for subscribers. This is only for subscribers, but you can become a subscriber. You can have a, become a subscriber, get the webinar, get all my uh, get my other webinars that discuss these techniques that I discuss here. And then you could cancel off three days. I don't know. That's if that if you don't find any positions, I'll be putting. We'll be putting new positions on um, at the time uh, we started already. Since I've announced it, we've already started putting new positions on. So it's it's a work in progress. And of course, by the time it comes to Thursday, I'm hoping that there's a bit of a, a sell off in the next day or two, so that we can add to some of the positions that we didn't get that we would like to get. So as it stands right now. Um, we've had some very nice um, uh, gains, 
Let me see if I can get this right now. So I'll go here. I get that. And then I'll go to the opening call. I'll go to the menu. I'll go to home, uh, newsletters. Okay, so this is what I'm going to be doing right here. Uh, opening call, subscriber webinar, Thursday, November the 14th, 4 o'clock to 5.30, sectors and stocks for the next market phase. We've already begun that. Uh, we're getting into those positions. There are still plenty more, some that we miss that I'd still like to get in. Um, and it's, it's a rotation. The sector rotation is really important. So here we've got uh, gold pulling back, and as it's pulling back, so you've got Bitcoin flying away to the upside. And we were lucky because we got uh, the Bitcoin uh, iShares uh, just recently, and they had a fabulous gain going and took some profits, of course. That's what I like to do, money management. I'll teach you about that as well. So that's important. And the other thing is, um, so gold is pulled back. We did have a gold stock. We got out of it um, uh, just about at our entry point. We take a little bit of a profit and then a tiny little loss. Um, and I just wasn't prepared to hold it because gold was just not acting very well. So here it is up three. It's, this is where, about where at this point on the left side right there, that's the low of the 10th of October at 26.18. Um, we're at 26.21. So this is the area where you should see some attempt at least to rally uh, peak E in the uh, weekly chart. Let's have a look at silver. Silver is trading uh, uh, up 23 cents at 30.84. Now, it took out that left side low. There's that arch, arch formation that I was just showing you in the one-minute E-mini chart. And now we've closed above it. Well, the, the day is the daily chart. We haven't closed above it until the end of the day. But we've moved above it, and that's important. But if you look at the weekly chart, the weekly chart is suggesting that that 914 period moving average is still very strong. So there could be a bounce towards the 31.70 area. And then we'll see if that can hold in silver. But the 200 period moving average of 29.59, that looks to me like a target over the next week or two. Let's go to um, high grade copper. High grade copper is actually taking a dive. It's at 4.17, uh, down 0.05. That's really that's a mixed economic picture, isn't it? Uh, but anyway, that's the way it is. The 200 period moving average of the weekly is at 4.08. Let's see if it gets there. Uh, we're going to use the. Um, Many, so okay. We want to go to the dollar. The dollar at this particular point is trading up quite nicely, up 32 ticks at 105.82. So we've had the dollar long since 2018. We've seen it go all the way to 120 and then pull back, 114 and then pull back. But our stop on the UUP, which is what we have, we've taken little bits off. We've kept a core position. And the only reason is I believe that the dollar represents the United States. It's emblematic of our economy, which has been the, one of the strongest in the world. And that, to me, is an important factor. It's, it's one of the key. I'm not doing it on a purely technical basis, but you can see on a technical basis, this trend line right here, this, you remember we were talking about it a little earlier on, this trend wave inside track. This is a repellent zone to become a propellant zone. If over the next three to four weeks, the dollar actually starts to trade in the 106.34 or higher area, right now, the week has just barely begun, and it snuck its head above that inside track rebalance zone. But look how strong the MACD is. Look at the stochastic at 88% flattening out. That's good. Look at the nine period moving average, very positive. So, so far, that's just hinting that the dollar is showing good strength, and I'm calling this a leg B in the daily chart. This represents the, the general market as well. Let's go to the USD JPY. Um, yeah, that's ag that's gone to a peak D. All all the technicals are well. The nine period moving average is very strong. The MACD did slip negative, and the relative strength is is not that strong. And the stochastic is actually quite weak. I love this. This is to me the most one of my most important indicators. The nine fourteen, as long as the nine fourteen is holding well, it's the technical indicator of last resort. You know, like the Fed is the, the bank of last resort. So this is my technical indicator of last resort. Look, in the weekly chart for the USD, the yen, USD uh, JPY currency pair, look, when it crossed positive back in early 2024, oh, that's this year. No, that's, yeah, that's this year. Look, it stayed positive all the way until it went negative right there. 
back in August, the week of the 2nd of August, and now it's flipped back to positive. And this, when it comes to currencies, it isn't often that it, it, it flips back immediately. Look look how long it took it to go from pink, which is negative, to green, where the nine period is over the 14 in the weekly chart. It took uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven weeks. So it doesn't just flip on a dime. Wow, isn't that good? Flip on a dime. All right, so this is a leg, gray leg A. No, this is a this is a leg A in the weekly chart. The, the stochastic is at 79.41, almost at 80 percent, which is what I need. Look at the USD JPY, and that will be. Did I type it in the wrong place? Probably, USD JPY. Oh, I've already got that. That's what we're looking at. I'm looking at the EUR USD. This is the euro. There it is. That's going the exact opposite way. Oh, oh, it's got to hold this left side low. It's down 0.003 at 1.06. So we're looking at this low right here as really important because this is a lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m in my methodology. Um, and if it takes out decisively the low of 1.06011, uh, the 19th, the week of the 19th of April, then you can see maybe it heads down towards the low right here that was made back in October of 2020. Basil Chapman sitting in for Tommy O'Brien. This is the market, morning market kickoff hour. I'll be back in a moment when the market opens and we're looking at the Dow futures up 38, the S&P futures are down five. I'll be right back. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. 
so we've just opened the market. It's up. The Dow's up 84. S&P's up 3.70. Uh, nice action. And we've got that. You remember we were looking at this, the low that was made here where I said it did a match to the left side, right side. Look at that takeoff. Isn't that nice? Leg B, a new recovery high from that high. And leg uh, alternate count. We call this an E at the moment for the five-minute chart. And an F, we could even change that a little later on in the... Uh, 10 minute chart. Very nice action. And I'm really pleased that it's up. I said that I expected today could see some weakness. So I had a question. Let me just do this real quickly. Um, I had a question about SQ. SQ is former Square. It's now called Block Inc. Uh, Financial Service and Digital Payments. Uh, down 73 cents at 82.67 right now. So this is the same question. Is this a brand new, e, is this the old E or brand new A? So what I tend to do in a case like this, just for the moment, because um, I have a legitimate case to make either one, that it's an old leg E or a brand new leg A. A brand new leg A says, are you kidding? Any kind of pullback you want to be buying, and E says, oh, it's got to be careful. Well, you see the weekly chart with this 200 period moving average of 86.21. If the 86.21, um, 80, yeah, if we get, if we see a square get even close to 85.10, that 86.20, no, 85.35. If uh, we see a square weekly chart get even close to that 80, 85, 25 area or 85, 35, that magnet line of 80 at 86.21, where we haven't even seen, haven't been to since the breakdown back in 2022, around about April, when it hit 100 and something, 135, I think, what was that exactly? That was 149.00 with a open of 132 round number open right at the 200 period moving average. What a clue that this was going down further. Anyway, that was the last time it was there. And we got close back in uh, the, a year, was it three years later? 22, no, one year, one year later, we got close to, no, a year and a half. Uh, in uh, January, February, March, April, we went close to the 200 period. Now, that's become a magnet line. So I see it getting close to that level, and then it maybe hang around and try to move higher. So Square, uh, once once upon a time, was at 282, I think, what was it, 289.23 back in August of 2021. Had a little bit of a tumble, uh, went down to the 38.85 low, of um, October of 2023. So this is the comeback. This is exactly what we'll be looking at in my webinar. Are there former fantastic winners that became former fantastic losers, and now they're back on the path to the upside? And in the monthly charts, if they're able to take out, if Square is able to take out this entire area right here, that rectangle that, look, it's like a head and shoulders bottom. It's like a, a cup formation or a ball formation. If it's able to close two out of three months in the next couple of months uh, above the high of March of this year, which was at 87.52, that says you can start looking at this ugly candle of April of 2022 that had a high of 145 and a low of 97 as a target. And you're trading at 84 right now. So the answer is yes. I uh, Do I like it? Uh, this fits exactly the category that I've been looking for. And uh, it was going to be one of those that I spoke about on Thursday. I wasn't sure if I should even hold off until then. But yeah, this is doing great. So uh, this is in that category. But it does mean it could stall. Uh, when it gets to about two points higher. And that says you've got to give it a little bit of room, I'd say, to 80 at least as a cushion. So, yes, the answer is yes. Next question was, uh, could I look at, I want to look at um, Shopify. Shopify is exactly the same thing. Shopify was up at 176 back in November of 2021. Had a little bit of a tumble to 23.63 October of 2022. Look where it is now at 106. Oh, and it gapped up today. Must have had earnings. Um, wow, these uh, this is I, I have to call this a leg A. I'd given it an up arrow. Um, I can't remember why. I was looking at about a week ago. 
I shouldn't have put that up arrow in. I hadn't. Oh, I, I looked at it just the other day. So that nine period moving average cross positive and the stochastic's 92. Yeah, that's leg C in the weekly. Yes. So Shopify, these are the ones that I want to look at. Gapped up. So we'll have to, there are others, but this is, this is one of those that I was looking at, uh, Shopify. And then W, I just put it in because it was one of those that was an absolute darling Wayfair uh, furniture, lighting, cookware, etc. online. Uh, and that monthly chart just looks horrible and it still looks horrible. And today it's up a dollar at 38.80. But I have to tell you, it's not a great chart. But there are some signs saying it could fit the turnaround category if certain things happen. And that's what we were looking at uh, come Thursday, my webinar for subscribers. So, yeah. So I needed to do something else. I had a question about DKNG. I remember, I said that this is not my favorite out of the sector, the sports betting. This is uh, DraftKings. Um, it's doing well here. It's down 36 cents today, 42.83. But it really had a big spike from the 35 area to 42. So that's a breakout. I have to even call that one a leg A, a leg C in the weekly chart. But remember, the one that I like the best is the one that we've had. Fabulous. We've had two positions. Now we've just got one left um, of, oh. What happened? I forgot to put down, you know, this is very interesting for subscribers to my opening call. Um, if stocks are doing well or positions are doing well, I don't really care. I usually put in when the earnings are, oh, I have earnings right there, light, light gray. I should have made it a little darker. Earnings on the 15th, but today's not the 15th, today's the 12th. Um, maybe that's earnings. So Genius Sports Limited, Data Betting Marketing, uh, from London, uh, it's been on our list. We've had really nice percentage gains uh, in a core position, and then we had a trading position. We actually switched the, the the later trading position, which was brought lower down than the core. We traded them so that the core became the one that we took the profits in, and the lower priced one uh, down in the uh, I can't remember right now in the low sixes. Uh, and here we are at 9.50. I better check the numbers. I don't want to just do that offhand. I should have it memorized, but I have so many stocks and things that we look at. Uh, so this position here, G, G, G and I is a symbol. Uh, yeah, the first one was bought at 6.99. We had real nice profits. And the second one now, which is our core position, is at 6.54. And here we are at 9.55. So that is really nice. It's a 50% or yeah, maybe more, 50% gain. Yesterday we had 100% gain in one of our positions. So this is very nice. Um, Genius Sports Betting. Remember, I said this is the one. I've spoken about this very often. I said chart pattern-wise, I don't know about the companies per se, but I'm doing chart patterns. I preferred the pattern of Genius Sports, G-E-N-I, is a symbol trading at... 9.64 up a dollar 56 up 20 percent right now yeah i preferred that one and that's a really nice breakout now that's what i was talking about in the monthly you see how the monthly was looking terrible but look at the way the nine period moving average all the way through since a, over a year ago has been green even on the pullback that's a great sign so we are this could in fact be a brand new leg c in the monthly chart i'll be back as a chapter does at 53 years and up seven and we'll be right back. We want to look at bonds. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. 
But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. So we're looking at, uh, I had a question, uh, and let me just do this before I forget, of FCX, that's Freeport Vibrant Copper Company. Now, this is one of those, what, you know, we look at companies, and if they've been around a long time, they build up a reputation. And the reputation for Freeport McMurray really has been stellar. It's been uh, just a fantastically solid company. But high-grade copper has been – it's not participating, and it's very interesting. It has to do with um, – I guess it has to do, in a sense, with the political climate right now. Um, I, I think, I, I just don't understand it, because it does look like there is economic activity. If you look at wood, I usually put these two together. Wood is the ISHA's uh, Global Timber and Forestry ETF. It did hold well, but it is starting to slow down quite considerably, going from the 86 area down to 80. Uh, uh, 79 right now, down 95 cents. So my sense is that there is some kind of an economic slowdown occurring in different areas. Not if you're looking at, uh, say, Lana. Uh, Lana trading right now down $1.20 at 171. Uh, that, that's just hinting that there's a, a slight slowdown. It's not like there's a major slowdown. Not even if you're looking at Home Depot, which is uh, up 3.33 at 4.11.62. Let me just go to the broader HGX. So the HGX is the Philadelphia Housing Sector Index. Yeah, look at this rally. And it is a peak C in the uh, Weekly chart, I, I would suspect it does go to the D. Maybe it's a bit of a struggle and takes time. So I, I, all I can say, this is back to Freeport McMahon. All I can say is, as a company, if you are a long-term buy and holder, I don't want to mess with your position if you are if you bought it anywhere down in the 38 to 40 area. But it's at 43.81, and I think it can revisit that 42 to 40, at least 41. Um, those price points over the next week or two from the weakness that it's showing right now. So all I'm going to say, I don't know, maybe you're short. I, if anything, the nine period moving average for the last uh, few weeks has been suggesting if you're short, anywhere from the 48 area, I would just hold that short and I'd lower the stop. I'd take a little bit off on each pullback uh, just for money management, but I'd keep a core short position. And this week, we've got all the way until Friday at 4 o'clock, but that nine-period moving average has flipped negative. So that's just suggesting that the peak D in the monthly chart, peak E in the weekly chart, peak D in the daily chart is all suggesting that 
Freeport Bank Maron, which has not just copper, but it has other uh, minerals as well. I think that it's just in a di very big digestive area. And this is the opposite of what I look at in the rectangle formation. Um, it's on the way down. And that just says if it takes out 42, there's just a really good chance it'll test the low that was made on the 10th of September of 39.34. Right now, it's really important that the 200 period moving average becomes a magnet line so that in the next two days, it attempts from 43.79 right now to get close to the 45.40 area. But just short term, definitely lower lows and lower highs. You have to say the trend is down. Hope that helps you there. Now, the next thing is um, I was asked if I would look at uh, semiconductors. That's really important. So the semiconductors right now, remember I'm doing this, this is the uh, 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock show. This is Tommy O'Brien's fabulous uh, morning market kickoff hour where he puts the fundamentals together with the technicals. I love the way he does that. Um, I'm just doing the technicals right now. And all I can say is that within the context of the semis, sideways I put into the den. Sideways is a tidal nomination. It is, you know, sideways is where uh, there's this moment where the tide uh, is just kind of settled. Uh, it's it's had a big move from the low tide. It's on its way to high tide. It's on the way from the high tide down to low tide. It's in that middle area. And you can't really tell unless it goes above 260, 226, which is the recent high in a cup formation. It's trying to do that, but it's really struggling. But at the same time, it's not breaking down below 240. Those are the levels to watch. 263. On the upside, a break above that says, whoops, now we can at least attempt to get to the 283.07 all-time high. I don't think so. I think if you look at NVIDIA, uh, NVIDIA is now really starting to, uh, it made an all-time high three days ago at 150. I was looking at this. I saw some round numbers. Now, where was it? 149.77 was the high of the 8th. Am I seeing, where did I see the round numbers? I typed it in. Oh, it was the last high, back at 144.32. So let's just see here. No, I don't see anything in the way of round numbers. All right, so NVIDIA is a special case because it's, it's the chips that they have are the ones that are still in high demand, right? So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say that I can see the upside. Look, if you go from the 140 high in NVIDIA back on the fourth of, week of the 4th of June at peak D, and it slumps down to the 100, uh, sorry, to the 90, ooh, no, it was, yeah, 90.69 90, 90 low, the week of the 9th of August, look, sharp move up to peak A, then under it, it has a gray A, a gray B, and then a C, and then a D. And look, each peak is just very steadily higher, but not a big move up. So I'm saying to you, my eye says that NVIDIA is starting to lose its upside momentum. Therefore, it's a big part of the SMHs. So I'm suggesting that the weekly chart that went to a peak C and re really now is stalling, that the, I've always said for decades now that the semiconductors generally lead the market up and lead the market down. There are moments when it, it, it goes the other way but they usually go in sync. When they fail to confirm market highs, is it just be a little careful because they are the they yeah you know, they are the leaders of the pack. You remember I, I've spoken about this before. I consider that the semis are the oil companies of the 1900s, Exxon and Mobil and all those companies. Um, they, they fed the whole the, the huge increase in economic um, growth right through the 1900s, um, into the 2000s. They're still there. But together, we've got the chips. So the mid-1900s mid to the late 1900s starts to see chips become way more important. Now chips are in everything. I wish they were potato chips, but they're not. In the meantime, back at the ranch, um, they are very, very important to every economic aspect. So in that particular instance, they're not, they're not going away. So I'm just looking at this and say on a short-term basis. So the question was, the SMHs to the, to, to, the, to the SOXS, well, if you look at, um, I'm going to come back to that. Good question, JB, I'll be back to that. So look, the SOXS, which we haven't touched for a little while now, 
because the, the moves have been so sporadic. You get the big move up and then nothing. Big move up and then it fails. And you've got peak A, peak B, peak C. I should put that in. So here's your peak A. Here's your starting point right there. Now, the bar that makes the high cannot be the low. If there was a parallel high, I could use that. But here you've got peak A right there. That's a peak. Peak A, peak B, and peak C. So it didn't do the D. It went to a C, and now it's stalling. Yeah, I, I would say keep your eye on the SOXS. In the next few days, I think there will be a trade as the semis pull back. I'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, Basil Chapman sitting for Tommy O'Brien. This is the Morning Market Kickoff Hour. I'll be back down to the next Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So we've got a bunch of questions that have come into the den and all of those uh, all of those charts that you had mentioned, Ash, could I look at? Those are very the very ones that I would like to look at. So I'll be back in a moment for my show, the Target Editions Hour. And let me just mention once again um, that I do have a webinar and some of the questions that came up today are going to de are dealing exactly with what I'm going to be discussing. Sectors is little for subscribers to my opening call Thursday, November the 14th, 4 o'clock to 5.30. Um, sectors and stocks for the next market phase, and I believe we are going to go into, we are beginning another market phase, and that's going to be, and, and some of them I discussed right here, and you've got um, uh, former 
leaders that were fantastic leaders that became absolute huge losers like uh, Shopify, uh, CMG, Salesforce, and many of those stocks. I want to revisit those. I am already starting to do that uh, every day because that's how we've gotten to uh, increase. That's how we got our IBIT, the IBIT, the, um, uh, this is the Bitcoin iShares that we got the other day. It's had a fantastic gain. That's how we got an August, August low. We started already going in for different uh, stocks. So yeah, this is going to be a really important uh, moment and I'm doing it from, so if you sign up, you start getting my newsletter right today. I want, tomorrow I might have positions that we would like to take starting officially on Thursday, but I need to get into them when it's appropriate. So if you're interested, and we've had some fabulous, I mean, we have one today that's up uh, 15% uh, in a sector that I said is under the radar, it's uh, in the betting sector, not one of my favorite areas, but that's not the point. The point is you want to make money, and that's it. So the Dow right now is only up three at 44,299. I said to subscribers, I think we can have a bit of a, a day of rest here, certainly in the Dow. Um, I'm anticipating there's actually a negative close. And then we just have it like a day or two of a pullback. That's going to be really important. Um, and I still think this is a leg A. It has every ingredient. That means we should still go higher to a B and a C and a D. That that applies to almost all the different indices. And, uh, oh, I didn't do the bonds. Let me just do that right now. The TLT, trading down 27 cents. Yeah, that's attempting to form some kind of a base. I'll get into it in my show, The Tiger Technicians Hour. So check out my opening call, Daily Newsletter. I'll see you in a few minutes. I am, I've been sitting in for the 